Hi friends, very welcome to my Vanitar. I'm the host Hesam Moshiri. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a digital AC dimmer. An AC dimmer has many applications for home and industrial use. What you see here is a digital AC dimmer and a separate controlling panel with two push buttons and a seven segment display. So this is the main circuit and this is the panel. This power supply provides the power required by the device and this oscilloscope shows the output waveform. Let me come here. This multimeter shows the output voltage. What else here is this classic light bulb that I have used it as an AC load. The dimmer has set on the minimum, so just a little warm up in the filament. This step down transformer make proper isolation so i can hook the channel 1 probe to the transformer and examine the output waveform okay now it's the time to show you how this device works so let me come and sit here okay by pressing this button the output voltage increases let's go up 40 50 60 volt 100 let's stop here do you see the uh, output waveform and changes in the light bulb? Let's go up again. The output voltage increases. 163 or 64. Uh, the output waveform gradually resembles a sine wave. Let's go up again. 180, 90, 200. Do you see the output waveform? 96, 99 and high. High means the highest value of the AC dimmer or 100 in the counter value. If you check the output waveform now, it's a full sine wave. The output voltage on the multimeter's screen shows 217. That is the full voltage of the mains. Now I'm gonna decrease the output voltage. So I just press this bottom button. Uh, 80, 70, do you see the output voltage decreases? Come down, do you see the waveform? 10 and LO. LO is the lowest value of the dimmer or zero in the counter value. All right, that was a short demonstration of how this digital AC dimmer works. In the next step, I will talk about the circuit and PCB. After that, I will connect this vacuum cleaner AC motor to the dimmer and I will check the operation. So do not miss anything, just stay tuned. Okay, let's see what we have here. This is a PCB of the main board. We can divide it into two parts. The right side belongs to the digital circuits and microcontroller and left side belongs to the power components and power circuits. I have galvanically isolated these two sections using these two components and this physical isolation gap. I have used the Symaxis component libraries for IC1, IC2, IC3, IC4 and IC5. So it is pretty clear that I was wasting many hours if I decided to design these component libraries from scratch. Some access libraries are free and follow industrial IPC footprint standards. I've designed this board using the Altium designer, so I installed the components libraries using the Semaxis Altium plugin. However, many other electronic designing CAD software are also supported, such as Eagle, KiCad, Proteus, EasyEDA, and similar. Another option is to download the libraries from the component search engine.com. Just you need to write the component name here and Bob's your uncle. These two pictures show a 3D view from the top layer and a 3D view from the bottom layer. As it is clear, four SMD components should be soldered on the bottom layer also. Two resistors and two capacitors. This picture shows the assembled PCB board. It's important that you also mount a proper heatsink on IC3. IC3 is a power triac. The size of the heatsink is dependent on your load. Sometimes you might even need a fan 
to dissipate the heat better. And yes, finally, this picture shows a bottom view of the assembled PCB board. Don't forget to solder these four components on the back side as well. In this picture, this isolation gap is pretty clear. I have described the schematic and more details in the article. So just don't forget to check the video description and reference links. Okay, now let me talk about the panel board. It is a two layers PCB board and the seven segment and push buttons are on the top layer. It would be more clear if I show you the 3D views. These two pictures shows 3D views from the top layer and from the bottom layer. I use the Symaxis component libraries for Q1 and Q2 and install them using the Symaxis Altium plugin. In the last revision of the board, I have also added these two XH connectors so you can easily connect your external panel push buttons to the board. This picture shows a top view from the assembled panel board. And this picture shows a bottom view from the assembled panel board. For the schematic diagram and more details, please visit the article link in the video description. And finally, we have everything in one place. Winner winner chicken dinner. The PCBs have been fabricated by the PCB Way company. I had no problem with the boards and soldering. I can say the quality of the boards is just perfect. I strongly recommend you to use original components for this design. In the next step, I will show you one easy method to find the components, check the prices and purchase them from the known sources. Alright, now I'm gonna show you how you can easily purchase original components. Just visit the component search engine.com and type the component name here. For instance, STM32 F030 F4. Press the search button. This is the microcontroller that I used in the main board. In the search result, the second one is our desired component. So just press on the component name and Bob's your uncle. Here you can find more details about the component, schematic symbol, PCB footprint and the 3D model. We are interested about the stock and price condition. So just press check stock and prices button. And there we go. You can check the inventory status and prices from the variety of distributors such as Aero, Digikey, let me come down, Avnet, Funnel, RS Component, Mauser, this is element 14, uh, Avnet again, New Advantage Corporation, let me check the Mauser distributor. Uh, so it was here I think yeah it's here so just press buy from this distributor button this is gonna open the mouse website okay the component has already selected and you can check the prices for different quantities so as you see it was as simple as that you can do the same process for other components and other distributors if you have read the article, you know I talked about zero crossing points and on off times of the triac. Here I hooked the channel 2 probe to the optocoupler to show you zero crossing points and the yellow wave shows the output signal. You can see the on off times of the triac. The coordination of the wave with zero crossing points is pretty clear. Now the dimmer is on full power and the output is a complete sine wave. When I decrease the power, it means I increase the turn off time of the triac. As the purple or uh, channel 2 waveform shows, I have to capture both rising edge and fallen edge of the pulse to not to miss any zero crossing point. That's very important, otherwise we might uh, face load flickering, too much EMI noise or uh, load instability. Another important point is that we should have a lowest latency around a 
zero crossing point. Otherwise, any time shift similarly will cause instability and flickering. I have considered these two critical points in this design. As I had promised, I connected this AC motor to the dimmer and let's see, does it work or not? I see it start to rotate. Can I increase the, the power? One, two, three, oh, oh. I have, actually, I'm afraid to increase the power because this vacuum cleaner motor will uh, walk on the table and break everything. It is natural that this AC motor adds some noise to the output. It is clear from the multimeter and oscilloscope screens. So this shows that you would not have any problem with connecting AC motors to this dimmer. Ok friends, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Also, give me a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.